Hello guys, Crispy here, welcome back to another video in this one, my friends, I'm gonna be testing a GeForce RTX 4080 Super in Cyberpunk 2077 with a Phantom Liberty DLC. This one is the Founders Edition model of the card, we are running it with the latest NVIDIA drivers and I'm not manually overclocking it. You can see all of its specs right here in Tech Power-Ups, GPU 0, sizable bar is also enabled there, and over on the left, preparing it with a Ryzen 9 7950X 3D with half of its cores disabled, so we're only utilizing the 3DV cache cores and it's basically the same as a 7800X 3D, and over on the memory tab we're using 32 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 memory, 6, 000 megahertz memory. That's it, <laughs> let's get into it, shall we? Okay, let's go over the settings first, I'm starting at 1080p resolution and we're also gonna test 1440p, 4K and 8K resolutions in this video, and I'm using the Ultra Settings preset right here with no FSR or DLSS, and I'm also gonna disable these options because, well, they just blur the image and add chromatic aberration and so on, and it's ugly. <laughs> so this is it, Ultra Settings at 1080p. And well guys, look at this, oh boy, <laughs> since we're not using ray tracing or path racing right here we're getting really high fps at 1080p resolution and of course because the 4080 super is kind of a beast of a gpu you know it's very fast of course uh, now my my question is will we have a little bit of a cpu bottleneck here because this is one of the most intensive areas for both the gpu and cpu to render in the entire game this is the Dogtown area in the phantom liberty dlc and you can see that gpu utilization is actually fluctuating by quite a bit and we're getting a few stutters here and there but that's just the game auto saving it usually does that back there all right guys so that's the experience at 1080p i'm not gonna spend a lot of time here of course because uh, it can clearly do it 144 fps average it's gonna be extremely smooth if you bought a 4080 super for 1080p gaming well i guess you're all set for like five years or so <laughs> but to remove the cpu bottleneck guys we got frame generation right here we can enable that and i think it will will get 99% GPU usage all of the time, and look at those FPS. It also looks very similar to what we saw previously, the native 1080p resolution, just by enabling DLSS on top of native, you know, it looks uh, kind of the same, but it does have quite a few artifacting issues here and there, especially with flying papers like this one. It doesn't really know what to do with it, and it flickers quite a bit and it shimmers, so um, yeah, there's that. At least in this Dogtown area, I wouldn't really advise you to enable frame generation or at least at 1080p resolution maybe at 4k it will look better since we got more pixels of course i'm gonna turn off dlss frame generation now and play at 1440p resolution here we have it 2560 by 1440 is now the res native res using ultra settings no ray tracing or path tracing and look at those fps 100 ish frames per second in one of the most intensive areas in the entire game. This is great. Holy crap, that, we can see the insides of the car actually. That is interesting, okay. Look at that. Huh. Anyway, let's start counting our FPS and uh, well, we won't really see a CPU bottleneck anymore. That's the good thing about playing at 1440p <laughs> compared to the 1080p part of this video. Um, <laughs> Can you get out, please? Thank you. <laughs> there we go. You know what? I kind of want to do or try to do the double side flip again because I did that once in one of these GPU reviews and it was absolutely amazing. I guess it's never gonna drop from uh, like 80 FPS. That's probably the minimum that we've seen. 1% low suggest we dropped further than that, but I didn't really see it, honestly. It's just some of the variations in the frame time graph. Uh, that happen every once in a while. It will drop 1% load. Goodbye, Bobby! Yes, it was you! He said it wasn't me for some reason. Uh, but yeah, okay. Here we go. Getting 100 FPS. A little bit of more action on screen at the moment. Let's see how it does. Oh gosh, what am I even shooting at? Come on! Come on! Can we explode this bastard? I don't, I don't think so. Let's just, let's just run away. Oh, there are way too many of them. Way too many! Jesus! Okay, okay, there we go. See, it's, it's not a problem. I mean, GPU usage sometimes drops a little bit to the, like, high 80s, but, uh, yeah, it's still very stable, of course. Right, we're back here, guys, and I think it's now time for us to try some uh, DLSS. Yeah, let's use DLSS quality, which looks very good at 1440p. It's not like the native stuff, but, you know, sometimes... 
when I'm playing in a 1440p monitor in some particular titles and I think in Cyberpunk as well I do like the looks of DLSS better than the native resolution especially because the game has some TAA at native res it looks a little bit softer than usual and you can actually adjust sharpening with DLSS enabled so this is probably how I'd end up playing this game on a 1440p monitor if I didn't really care about ray tracing and stuff like that Again, the game looks absolutely gorgeous like this. It's getting 120 FPS, which will feel extremely smooth on any high refresh rate monitor. Even if you have like a 360 Hz 1440p monitor, 120 FPS will feel like 120 FPS on a 120 Hz monitor, for example. It is going to feel very, very good and very smooth. It's not like you're on a 60 Hz monitor and you drop into the 50s and then you can feel the jitters and so on. No, this is... This is a great, a really, really awesome experience right here. Uh, and that's exactly what the 4080 Super should deliver. I'm gonna stop it right there and I'm gonna go ahead and set it to native resolution again. But this time I want to use frame generation instead of the resolution scaling or DLSS. Now at 1440p, you could utilize quality DLSS and frame generation at the same time, but I wouldn't really recommend it because then it, the visual quality degrades quite a bit. I mean, it's very similar once again to the native resolution stuff, but you will see those little artifacts with flying papers and so on, like right here. Yeah, that's definitely very noticeable still. Um, and you will see a little bit more shimmering than at native resolution or even with quality DLSS um, without frame generation. But hey, if you don't care about those things, again, if, if you even prefer the, the slightly softer look over here, Go ahead, you can play with 150 FPS, you can take advantage of a 1440p uh, high refresh rate monitor, you could still, uh, with the LSS quality of course, and even without any DLSS, um, but yeah, you're gonna max out most of the time, or be close to maxing out uh, 1440p 144Hz like this. Goodbye, Bob! Okay, wait a second, okay, <laughs> I missed. Whoa, what the hell is happening with the hair? Whoa! See that? That's probably a frame generation issue. If I disable it, it's probably going to be gone, right? No? Okay. <laughs> I mean, it has a little bit less noise than with FG, but, uh, well, it's Cyberbug. It's just another one of those Cyberbug cases. Let's move on to 4K resolution with native res. Here we have it, 3840 by 2160 native resolution, ultra settings, and now we're dipping into the 50s and even 40s. Holy crap, is this game intensive. And right here as well, the DLC is intensive. Oh my goodness. Damn. I, I, I thought we'd be closer to 60, honestly. I don't remember what kind of FPS we got in the full review that I made in this particular title. What am I doing? I don't want any of that. Let me just uh, use this. Yeah, there we go. Start counting our FPS as well. It just goes to show you how intensive this game really is. A 4080 Super is struggling now. Look at that. It does dip into the, eight, uh, the 30s. Holy. This is all without ray tracing or anything, of course. <laughs> Quite rough of an experience, guys, not gonna lie. Yeah, I would not utilize these settings. I'd probably just drop it down to high instead. Uh, if you want to play at native 4K resolution, that should be doable with 60 FPS. Um, but actually, what I would do instead is enable the LSS on quality, or even lower than that, because at 4K resolution it looks really good. And look at that. On quality DLSS, ultra settings, 4K, this looks basically as detailed as 4k native res but a little bit sharper which i like once again and we're getting 60 ish frames per second one percent lows are already in the 40s because of some frame time variation this game isn't really the best when it comes to consistency there i tried to do the the little double side flip thingy but i don't think i'm gonna ever do that again unfortunately obviously again if you're playing the base game you're gonna get 70 plus fps most of the time with a couple of dips into the 60s or maybe into the 50s sometimes but here who are you calling a mother what what just happened here what just, is that you what the what is oh wait we, we need to check that out guys <laughs> uh, 
Okay, let me just do this. Oh, it, this car really reminds me of a car that I had a long time ago. I feel like three years ago or so. Yeah, it's very similar. So would I play like this? Still probably not. <laughs> Just because it still dips into the 50s sometimes. Let's see performance DLSS. It looks really good here at 4K. Uh, DLSS in Cyberpunk is really well done, guys. It's one of the best implementations of uh, the technology. And of course, uh, that's to be expected because Nvidia worked with the developers on that and implementing the ray tracings and the ray reconstructions and so on. On my 42-inch monitor, I can tell that it's just a little bit softer and there is just a slight shimmering sometimes in some objects, you know, but it's really slight. Again, I mean, it's it's close enough to the native resolution stuff that I wouldn't really care at all and I would have a fantastic time playing at performance DLSS and 4K res, especially with the close to 100 FPS that we're getting at the moment in one of the most intensive areas. Look at the GPU utilization, it's even fluctuating a little bit sometimes. Oh, this is the first time that I'm noticing Jack in this game. Are you serious? How did I not notice that before? Pride of El Jacko. What the heck? How, how did I not notice that before, guys? Jack is in cyberpunk. And he's forever going to be there. There's another one right there. Beautiful. It's Jack and Jacqueline, actually. Anyway, I'm going to stop it there. 98 FPS average, 65, 1% lows. It's a really great gameplay experience. And I think I would actually go with these settings for my own gameplay session. Maybe even with, uh, like, frame generation. Let's see how it does. Performance DLSS with frame generation on top. Yeah, a little bit softer once again, but not too much, guys. It still looks really good, and now we're getting 100 plus FPS. <laughs> it's kind of insane how well frame generation is doing with 4K performance DLSS. I couldn't do the, the little side flip again, guys. <laughs> Just, uh, that's never gonna happen. Damn it. I would have no problems playing like this. If you want that smoother experience, go ahead, enable frame generation with performance DLSS. But if you're fine with like 90 something FPS average, well, you can play with uh, the performance DLSS without FG. Now let's see with quality DLSS and frame generation at the same time, we're getting around like 30 more FPS than what we saw previously. Yeah, that's not bad, although the input lag, since it's dropping from 100 FPS, it's a little bit more noticeable now than it was before. I just lost the freaking uh, door. Okay, 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 let's just, let's, let's go over here. Now, the question is, would you trade the little input lag for slightly better visuals? Actually, it's sharper than performance DLSS was without frame generation. Um, and a smoother experience. I think I would be fine with this. It still feels good with 90 FPS, you know? It's only when you start dropping into, like, the 70s and 60s where frame generations, uh, input lag will uh, wreck your experience, basically, and it will make it very, very noticeable and not that enjoyable. I'll run him over. Uh, come on. Come on. How come you don't die with the explosion? Oh, you're a robot? No. Wait. Is it a robot? I don't understand. <laughs> so it's probably time to move on to the ray tracing stuff, right? Let's do ray tracing ultra, no path tracing yet, and the highest settings. I'm just going to restart the game and go back to 1080p resolution. Hello, kind sir, how's it going? It's a Uber Eats guy from the future. Anyway, let's start counting our FPS. We're getting 90s. This is native resolution and we're getting 90s. 1080p ray tracing. I'm not sure if I'm surprised or not. I, I remember that the 4080 doing a little bit worse of a job when I tested it at 1080p with the Ultra RT settings, but this is very similar to the 4080, so <laughs> maybe I'm just not remembering correctly, but I thought it would get around like 70 to 80 most of the time, especially here in one of the most intensive areas once again. A little stutter there. Yeah, it is It is very playable. <laughs> I mean, if you're running that 1080p monitor, sure, you can play with ray tracing at native resolution. I'm not sure if anybody is doing that because it's common sense that 
if you spend so much on a GPU, you should probably go with a higher res. But anyways, let's go ahead and try some uh, ray reconstruction, which can only be enabled, apparently, if you use the LSS quality. And I want to use some frame generation as well at the same time. I mean, we, we don't need to, but sure, why not, right? <laughs> let's try this like this. It's looking kind of uh, an oil painting a little bit, guys. CPU is actually a bottleneck here, even with frame generation, because ray tracing is also super intensive on the CPU, not only on the GPU. But I guess that oil painting effect is a little bit emphasized because I am using a huge monitor at 1080p with upscaling on top of it. I think on like a 1080p monitor, 27 inches or 24 inches, it will look okay. And you can actually have a freaking high refresh rate experience really high refresh rate experience even with ray tracing enabled which is nice all right i could deal with this but again i'm just gonna skip it to 1440 now <laughs> that's more adequate so here we go 2560 by 1440 everything is still the same i disabled frame generation and the dlss and look at that native 1440p resolution with ray tracing ultra settings it's giving us below 60 frames per second. Okay, that was almost a bad crash. For some reason, my car isn't really turning very well. Getting 60s around here in this slightly less intensive area, but now it's down into the 50s again. Yeah, this is not a good experience. I'm gonna say it right away. If you drop from 60 FPS with a car this expensive, you're doing it wrong, okay? Because <laughs> it has some power, obviously, and all you need to do is enable some DLSS. It will still look great, and uh, it's totally worth it. Again, it actually looks better to my eyes than native resolution in this particular title. So let's use DLSS quality right there. I'm going to use ray reconstruction as well. Ah, this is, this is definitely great, guys. Look at the reflections on the car. They're so crispy. I like it. Okay, it's been a really long time since I tested this game and I'm just in awe again. <laughs> Especially after playing so much Helldivers. This game is such a different look than Helldivers, man. It looks way better. The GPU isn't even consuming that much power as well. I haven't talked about this, but these 40 series cards don't usually use all of their rated TDP, you know? Only if pretty much everything is being utilized on the GPU. So you end up with a gaming power draw of way lower than the 320 watts that it consumes. So that, that's another great thing about these cards, you know? Let's stop it right there, 90 FPS average, nice. Gonna enable frame generation on top of it, which I would probably not do once again, just because of uh, the little imperfections in the flying papers and so on. But uh, if you are all about that super smooth, high refresh rate experience, what is going on there? Um, yeah, this is it. You can actually achieve that with the 4080 Super at 1440p. You could say it's not 1440p anymore because it's upscaling from 900 and something p. Hello, Jack, how's it going? Or 800 and something p, whatever the resolution is when you use quality DLSS at 1440. And on top of that, of course, we have the frame generation enabled. But it looks very similar anyways. Again, if you haven't really tested these technologies, you might think, oh, no, I'm never going to use frame generation. Why would I? It's going to make things softer and laggier and so on. But I wouldn't mind it. Goodbye, Bob. Did I what? How did you not die there? <laughs> what the hell? Moving on to 4K resolution using the same ray tracing ultra settings. Native res, guys. Oh, it gets wrecked. Wait a second. I, I want that. I want that. No, 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 no. Where are you going? Where are you going? Boy, stop. Yes, thank you. What? How, how don't you die? I don't get it. Wait. He's really a robot, right? Yeah. God, this is so hard to play like this. It's getting 20. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's very detailed. I guess if you want to take screenshots, you could set it to these settings and... Um, play like this for a bit just uh, to adjust the screenshot positioning and so on but to actually play the game no <laughs> 20 something is is very very rough let's use quality dlss first previously quality dlss without ray tracing would put us in the 60s here we're getting like 10 15 less fps than that which is not really terrible honestly guys 
I've had worse experiences, but this ain't it, guys. Again, if you're spending a thousand bucks on a GPU, you don't want to drop from 60. Heck, you might not even want to drop from 100. <laughs> I wouldn't want to drop from 100 in such an expensive GPU, actually. So that's where frame generations and so on come in. Oh my God, what are you doing here? Where did you come from? Oh, maybe that's her house. Okay, <laughs> moving on. It can touch 60, as you can see, but it's not gonna happen very often, unfortunately. So, no, I wouldn't do this. Ray reconstruction wasn't even enabled. Wait a second, let me enable that. Uh, it gets around the same FPS, not really much of a difference there. It's just gonna make the reflections prettier, but we're not really seeing many reflections at the moment because our car is gone. Maybe I should actually load the previous game with the other car. I wouldn't do this, but maybe frame generation will help us get to like those 80 FPS or so. Yep, that's exactly what we get. I guess I kind of know what to expect every single time now. I've been doing this forever. Also, the visuals look insanely good, of course, <laughs> but now it's starting to drop into the 70s sometimes. So the input lag coming from frame generation is now very noticeable. It's still manageable, it's not like 30 FPS input lag or something, but it's kind of like 40 to 50 FPS input lag and you're getting the smoothness of 70 to 80 FPS instead. And that means that if you are trying to shoot at people and have fast reactions and so on, it's, it's, it's a little bit harder to control than with higher FPS. I would say that with these GPUs at least, where you can get very high FPS, you should probably aim for 90 plus or 80 plus FPS with frame generation enabled. Let's use performance DLSS right here without frame generation first. And yep, that, that's looking really similar to what we just witnessed with the quality DLSS and uh, for, um, the frame generation enabled at the same time, yes. It might be a little bit sharper and oil painty right now than it was before but it still looks good in my opinion guys and if you don't want frame generation or the input lag that comes with it it's now getting 70s this is not terrible let's stop it there guys 1% lows were in the 40s but it never really dipped from 60 and let's enable frame generation on top of everything here performance DLSS 4k ultra RT settings and it's getting 100 FPS Okay, I would actually enable frame generation. First of all, it kind of looks a little bit less like an oil painting right now. I'm not sure if it's just placebo, but maybe because the frame generation is softening up the image slightly, it looks a little bit better. On YouTube, it's gonna look a little bit worse than it does, of course, because of the compression. But uh, I can tell you, I, I could play the game all day long like this once again. But it's just the, the little, the little artifacts on those papers. Those annoy me a little bit, guys, not gonna lie. And uh, yeah, that's it for the ray tracing ultra settings. All that's left to do is play with ray tracing overdrive. This is path tracing, guys. It's extremely intensive. Here we have it after a fresh restart of the game, 1080p resolution using the same path tracing or ray tracing overdrive settings, this native res. I'm expecting like 40 FPS. That's quite a bit better than I expected. It's still gonna dip down into the 40s and inevitably, but uh, whoa, okay, I like it. <laughs> This is working quite well. Uh, I mean, obviously, it's, it's not the experience that you'd go for or anyone would go for, definitely. But remember, this is path tracing that we're talking about right here. Doesn't look very good right now because it's 1080p and uh, some of the reflections have a, quite a lot of noise on them as well. But it is playable. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody should use this, but it is definitely playable. I'm gonna go ahead and enable the DLSS right here using quality, ray reconstruction, and let's see. These settings should deliver, yeah, a way better experience. We're now up into the 80s, 80 to 90 again. So it's uh, around the same as we saw in a lot of settings that we tested already, but those looked quite a bit better than this. Yeah, it's path tracing, it's very impressive and so on, but who who cares really if the trade-off is playing at what is basically 720p upscaled with 80 FPS, whereas we were playing with um, 4K resolution DLSS 
performance or something like that with the same FPS previously, and it looked way, way better than this. Uh, I wouldn't do this. This is just an experimental feature. I think it's not experimental anymore, actually, but yeah, if you want path tracing, maybe wait for next generation. <laughs> also frame generation on top of it. Just real quick, checking it out. 150s. 140s and 150s sometimes with path tracing. Starting to get impressive, right? We're coming from 50-ish FPS to 130 plus FPS. All right. <laughs> See, all of these upscalers and frame generators and so on, these are great technologies. I just wish the new developers with new games out there would actually optimize their games before using those technologies uh, and not rely on them for the games actually to be playable. I'm gonna stop it right there. Let's try it at 1440p. All right, here we have it. This is it. Native resolution, 2560 by 1440. Ooh! <laughs> yep, that's <laughs> that's really rough. It's actually getting slightly higher FPS than what we saw at 4K native resolution, or actually the same FPS right here at least, uh, as 4K native with Ray Tracing Ultra. This is how much more intensive path racing really is. It's just insane, guys. <laughs> Let's try the LSS quality and Ray Reconstruction. It should get it up to the 60s, eh, just barely, yep, no, no, it doesn't really touch 60 FPS. Maybe in less intensive areas, but not here. Well, you know what, this is, this is actually kind of looking great. <laughs> and it's getting almost 60 FPS, so I guess like an overclocked 40, 80 super, blah, so many numbers. <laughs> uh, an overclocked 40, 80 super would probably get 60 plus on average. And right now we're getting 60 on average and above 60 FPS sometimes, <laughs> not all of the time. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it does look very, very good. Maybe with frame generation, it's gonna become really nice because with a baseline of 50 to 60 FPS, it should get us around 100 FPS here. Start counting our FPS again. Um, the input lag is not really bad because again, it's like 80 plus all of the time. And it looks very similar. It did get rid of the oil painting effect slightly again with the frame generation enabled. Yeah, you know what? I can see some people playing at 1440p. By the way, hello, Jack. Um, using the, the path tracing settings over here, or ray tracing overdrive. Because this is a good experience. Okay, quite impressive. I didn't think it would do this good. So... You can play with path tracing in this GPU. But can we do it at 4K resolution? That's the real question. Native res first. <laughs> it's gonna die. <laughs> I mean, it got 30 FPS at 1440 and even 20. So, of course, at 4K, it just gets wrecked. <laughs> 13 frames per second. Uh, let's enable the, 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 the no frame generation yet. The LSS, I'm gonna go with performance right away because there's no way quality will be playable still. Looking amazing as usual. And now we're getting 50s and 40s. It doesn't really feel that smooth. It has quite a, an inconsistent frame time graph right there. Sometimes there are quite a few spikes, especially when those guys are shooting at us very close to us as well. I like that. Yeah. Um, but hey, it's path racing, guys. With all of the bells and whistles enabled and very close visuals to native 4K. A little bit of an oil painting effect going on right now because frame generation is not enabled yet, um, but it is working. It's definitely playable compared to the 15 FPS that we were seeing a moment ago. <laughs> Let's go ahead, frame generation. And this is now playable again. It's not as good of an experience as 1440p quality the LSS with frame generation was. This is a bit rougher when it comes to input lag, of course. Yeah, I can definitely notice quite a bit of it. Oh my god, what the hell? Okay, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, give me that. Give, give me that. Come on. Come on. All right. There we go. Can we see the explosion? Are we in time? See the explosion? I think so. Yeah, there we go. Good stuff. <laughs> 
Uh, doesn't drop our FPS, the explosions and so on, by the way. It's uh, well optimized in that regard. You know what? I am curious now, no, Jack, uh, to see what kind of FPS and what kind of visuals we can get with Ultra Performance DLSS. Because this will upscale from a very low resolution and it has frame generation on top of it and the ray reconstruction, which looks uh, like an oil painting sometimes. Okay, it kind of looks like 1080p at the moment. Yeah, but it has a lot more imperfections and things at the distance look so bad. Whoa! Yeah, this is... You should avoid Ultra Performance DLSS. <laughs> Alright guys, this is it. I'm gonna set it to the low settings now, without frame generation. Actually, let me try low settings with frame generation <laughs> and the performance DLSS. Again, I, I, I'm just curious here, guys, okay? This is it. How many FPS will, we, will it get? Holy crap, 180. It still looks really good on low settings in 4K. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not 4K native, but it's close enough to native resolution where, to the point where I, I don't care. <laughs> but I didn't set it to the low settings to play at 4K, my friends. You know what's coming. <laughs> Let's do 8K resolution 7680 by 4320 this is four times the pixel count of 4k and it's around 33 million pixels <laughs> compared to the 8 point something million pixels on the 4k resolution it is insane this is set to auto at the moment let's disable it it is a terrible experience surprisingly vram is not maxed out i mean Maybe unsurprisingly, because it's all low settings, obviously. On anything higher than low settings, it would definitely max out the VRAM. Headshot there, headshot there. Good stuff. Look at that. I'm more precise at 8K resolution. Maybe because the resolution is so high. Probably not because of it. It's probably because I can take my time now. <laughs> uh, goodbye, Bob, once again. Look at this over here. Yep, 24. It's a cinematic experience for sure. <laughs> Kind of crazy, though, that we can get native 8K resolution gameplay at 20-ish FPS, and with the 4090, it would probably be at 30-ish FPS, and that's crazy. What if I use the LSS performance? Let's check it out. This brings down the VRAM usage by, like, 2 gigabytes, and now we're getting 60s. Although it's a little bit stuttery, probably because it's still applying things. Oh my goodness. That's not how physics work, I think, but okay. <laughs> also, power utilization now is quite a bit higher than it was before. I didn't really notice it with ray tracing and 4K resolution. I guess it was around these values. But yeah, it's definitely consuming quite a bit more power than like 1440p did and 1080p. Let me just enable frame generation. Last thing that I'm going to do here in this video. It's already long enough. I'm sorry, but we need to know. <laughs> Will it do it? Oh, it's getting less FPS. GPU usage is also pretty low, which is interesting. And uh, VRAM, I guess it's maxed out. I didn't really see it touching 16 gigabytes, but it probably already swapped some things into the RAM. And uh, that's why it's getting lower FPS than without frame generation. If you don't have enough VRAM, that's what's gonna happen. And this is why I don't like to see 8 gigabytes being put on stuff like the 4060 and even 4060 Ti 8 gigabytes model. Because those cards sooner than later will run out of VRAM when uh, stuff like frame generation is enabled. And that's one of the main selling points of them in the first place. So it just doesn't make sense to me. They should have come with 10 or 12 gigabytes. That's been it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope it was informative. Don't forget to drop a like if you did enjoy it. Comment down below to help with the algorithm and stuff. And I'll catch you in the next one. Love you all. Bye-bye.